All right, we're live. What's up, YouTube folks? Uh, it's Belton back again. I know we just dropped the video earlier today, but we're going to do another one by popular demand. Uh, give you guys the option to vote on what we'd be uh, covering in the video. And overwhelmingly, uh, close to 800 of you uh, voted for uh, how I made three to five mirrors a day, mapping in two divines of gear. So to uh, keep maintain that promise, we are going to be covering how it was that I was able to make between three to five mirrors a day over the first couple weeks of the league. Um, I know a lot of you have been asking over YouTube in the community section or commenting on the videos uh, with the mirror crafts that we've done. Um, so far, we made the number one elemental bow, uh, six tier one, number one elemental quiver, six tier one. And uh, we've got the six tier one, uh, number one um mirror ring as well with the uh, t1 multi on the implicit and the frenzy there wow uh this was obviously ooh, excuse me pretty expensive um in the realm of 25 mirrors 35 mirrors uh 38 mirrors to 4 38 to 40 mirror 38 to 40 mirror range uh was spent just making those three items now naturally this had a pretty high cost uh, and a lot of that did actually come from this method. Um, this would be the predominant uh, way that we were able to make currency. Myself solo and uh, the group of guys I had working with me, uh, which was five other individuals. Uh, those caveats I will discuss here. Uh, before we jump into the video, uh, I do want to say that uh, for those of you who don't like these long drawn out ones, uh, I actually have put together uh, over the past couple of hours uh, a spreadsheet, but not only a spreadsheet, one that you guys can enter in specific values. Uh, it'll, I'll make that public after. It'll be below in the description. Um, and so it'll take away any guesswork. Uh, I know people often ask when I make these kinds of videos, oh, does this work now, blah, blah, blah. Is it still, you know, several months later, is this gonna work? The day of, is it gonna work, blah, 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 whatever. Um, so to prevent that, I have made a fully interactive and uh, self, uh, like correcting, self-calculating, uh, spreadsheet where you simply need to enter certain uh, data values that are marked off by uh, yellow cells. Uh, and once you do that, it will tell you profitability, uh, rates of return, etc. cetera. Um, and so with that being said, we'll go into that a little bit further, but uh, here we go. How, how I was able to make three to five mirrors a day. And I'm sure some of you guys probably guessed it. Uh, it is actually through memories and not really memories at, at large, Specifically one memory, and it's a memory I've brought up quite a bit in the past, and it is the Einhar's Memory of Harvest Beasts. As you can see here, I have a buttload of them, and I have had a buttload of them throughout the league. Um, these are a memory that is, uh, I would say, pretty popular in, in public consciousness. I, I know most of you watching this video are probably aware of these, but I'm not quite sure that people are fully aware of uh, how lucrative they actually are when they're done properly. So throughout the course of this video, I am going to tell you specifically um, how to set those up, how it was done, ways that you can make those profit, and then we'll go over the numbers. And uh, at the end, I will uh, perhaps just run one of them to show you how you can kind of tweak them uh, to really uh, maximize your output there. So for those of you who are unaware of uh, how a memory works in general, uh, a memory is a basically a mapping system that is separate from the Atlas and separate from Kyrak and separate from the crafting bench. So it does not take anything with your uh, tree. Your Atlas tree has no impact on memories. Uh, neither does, uh, you cannot use the map device. You cannot put scarabs, anything like that. When you use a memory, uh, in fact, we'll do this, uh, we'll do one of them here quickly. So I can show you guys the functionality. Uh, when you equip a memory, it will go like this. Memories uh, will have a certain amount of maps assigned to them. Uh, it'll pick a random path based on how many maps it is. For the Einhar Memory of Harvest Beast that we'll be discussing today, it's three maps. So you can see here we started with Fields, which then went to Strand and followed up by Grotto. Um, this is the UI that will happen. They are all attached to a master. So they'll either be Alva's ma uh, memory, uh, Nico's memory, Einhar's memory, Kyrax memory, etc. You'll discuss that with the master and it will open its own little independent UI here. You can modify the map within this, uh, but you can't equip Scarabs and your Atlas does, has no impact on it. Now, um, why this is actually a very good system for the purposes uh, of, of what we're doing and what we'll be discussing here um, is that because these are not contingent on your Atlas, uh, you are not 
at a disadvantage if you do not focus on your atlas early. Furthermore, because memories all have a specific uh, targeted thing associated with them, so there are memories where you can farm Harbinger currency, ones where you can farm essences, things like that. In this case, we are farming beasts. Um, and knowing what you're going for going into it, there are certain um, chase, like the, the, you know, the material that you are going after that have no bearing um, or have no detriment by being run on easier content. Um, for example, if you are looking for um, abyssal gear uh, or abyssal jewels, um, the item level could be relevant on that, right? Like if you want to getting a CG and vise or a, um, you know, an abyssal jewel, uh, you're probably going to want to have a higher item level. And so you want to have a higher map uh, tier. Um, if you uh, are running for beasts, however, uh, the beasts have no bearing. If you run a tier 16 map or if you run a tier one map, the red beasts that you're going to be using, which is uh, the red beasts are the ones that have the specific function. Yellow beasts are the ones that are referred to as rare beasts. I know sometimes people uh, confuse the two, but red beasts um, do not. The item level has no bearing on um, the specific uh, function that that uh, beast will have. So why that's incredibly powerful um, in the context of what we're discussing here is that Early on in the league, so the first two weeks, we're now uh, exactly three weeks into the league, but um, early on, most people, the vast majority of people, uh, are scaling up their builds through character investment, right? Um, so in order to progress through the Atlas and to get to higher tier maps and to get to higher tier content, um, you know, by, by clearing the Atlas out, they get more points, which allows them to farm more. Uh, that, that requires a commiserate level of scaling into their character, right? So even though you might make more currency per hour, um, most of that currency has to be recycled back into the character so that it can progressively move up that that uh, ladder until people get to, you know, tier 16s where they can start juicing things and get, you know, get their four void stones and all of that. However, since these memories are completely independent and since Harvest Beast or Beasts in general are a, um, a mechanic at large that uh, is not, does not scale with um, uh, the item level, we can run these on tier one maps um and we can run them not only on tier one maps we can run them on tier one white maps because uh beasts are not impacted by local map mods either right um having eight mods on the map or having harder uh affixes on there has no bearing on the amount of beasts that'll show up uh in particular with this memory uh just specified uh, as it has a specific set of rules and we'll go over those now so um what we're going after, uh, sorry to rewind for a second here, the Einhar's memory of Harvest Beasts, um, what it rewards and what we're going after are the um, the Harvest Beasts which have unique crafts, obviously, in the Menagerie. Most of you will be familiar with these, but in case you're not, uh, there are nine total beasts. Uh, three of them are Vivid, three of them are Wild, and three of them are Primal. Um, the function of those beasts is that a Vivid Vulture allows you to reroll a Synthesis Implicit, uh, these are uh, very, very core, uh, I, or very, very core beasts that are absolutely necessary to craft the, the vast majority of mirror items. Uh, you have vivid watchers, which allow you to reroll awaken gems. Vivid abrax, which will give you either a shaper, um, shaper elder, or a conqueror map. Uh, then you've got the wild, uh, which are wild bristle matron, which will give you a random meta mod. Um, However, um, the way that they're more, most commonly used is that uh, the only meta mod that is a prefix is suffixes cannot be changed. Um, and so people will most often use the Wild Bristle Matron as a, you know, free slash cheap way to get uh, a two divine meta mod guaranteed um, uh, for a fraction of the cost. Uh, but because of that, it tends to be pretty closely pinned to um, at the bare minimum one divine since the cheapest meta mod you can get is one div. Um, now the next wild beast is a wild Hellion Alpha that allows you to uh, re-roll a random modifier on a Watcher's Eye. That's how uh, a lot of these uh, really crazy uh, three modded Watchers uh, come about. Um, and the, the final wild beast is the wild Brambleback, which uh, will allow you to automatically level a Awakened Gem uh, by one level. So if you have like a level one Awakened Enlighten, you, you do a Brambleback and it'll go to level two. So you can basically power level uh, any Awakened Gem. Um, and not have to go through that that arduous process of, of, of doing that, which is obviously in particular early on in a league um, quite strong since, uh, you know, people haven't had the time. There's not, uh, there's, you know, there aren't hundreds and hundreds of these awakened gems on the market. 
Uh, people don't have the experience yet to to get them, but uh, Awakened Gems, obviously, typically at level 5, have some kind of uh, additional modifier added that can make them significantly more powerful. Um, now, the final three beasts are the Primals. Uh, Primal Rex Matriarch uh, will uh, allow you to uh, create a synthesis map, um, and that includes Cortex, and they are all equally weighted, so it can be either the rewritten, augmented, altered, or twisted, uh, or Cortex. One out of five, you get each one. Um, which is a fantastic uh, way. That was actually a recent change they made there. And then the Primal Cis Collar and Crush Claw. I always get these two confused, but one of them gives you um, a free use of the uh, map device. Uh, each one of these missions will be given to you. So you see here how it says your first time using this crafting option is free. One of them will make it so that every crafting option is given a free use one time. Uh, and then the other one makes it so that you get uh, an additional uh, master mission. Uh, for every single master, so and then including Kyrak, uh, and that's yeah. So those those are the harvest beasts, um, and as well as the function that they each have. Um, I know many of you probably knew that, but in case anyone just needs to get caught up a little bit, uh, as you could probably tell by their function, um, they are very very highly sought after, and they are incredibly liquid things that you will be able to sell pretty much immediately at any point in the league. Um, so this is not something where it's kind of like an abstract. Oh, are they going to sell? Blah, blah, blah. Is it going to take a while to move them? No, this is something that if you get them and you list them, um, almost, you know, if you put them competitively priced or at the lowest price in the market, uh, literally the second they hit the, the scanner, uh, you're going to get message for them. So the turnover on this is very hot. Um, so now that we know what the Harvest Beasts do, um, it's uh, and we know what memories are, uh, it's important to understand how they work. So when you assign the memory to the uh, three maps of your choice, well, you choose the first map and it'll pick a, a random route. Um, the first memory will have two Harvest Beasts in it. All right. The second memory, oh, sorry, the, the first map of the memory will have two Harvest Beasts. The second map of the memory will have three Harvest Beasts and the third map of the memory will have four Harvest Beasts. This is always the same. Um, and so that's a, a total of nine Harvest Beasts uh, for every memory. Um, on top of that, as I just mentioned, there are nine Harvest Beasts in total, three Wild, three Vivid, three Primal. Um, so that means on average, uh, and the, sorry, the Harvest Beasts are all equally weighted as well, even though some of them are more valuable than others. Some of them are objectively stronger than others. Um, it does not matter. They are equally weighted. And so since you are getting nine Beasts um, per memory every single time, nine Harvest Beasts, uh, and since there are nine equally weighted Beasts, that means the average distribution, uh, if you were to run these infinitely, would be on average each memory would give you one of each beast. Because of that, right? And so, so since we know what um, the average outcome is for each one, it is very, very, very easy to calculate what the exact return will be on these, um, since all of that information is readily available. And that is where this uh, spreadsheet, which I mentioned, uh, will come into a great use. Uh, this is something that I always, always, I, I haven't actually had an official spreadsheet like this. I, I spent a couple hours before recording this, putting it together. And as I mentioned, I'll make this public for you guys. Um, typically, I just use a notepad document and do the math quickly offhand. Um, but basically, all you need to know is that um, you just have to find out the oops, the price of each piece individually. As you can see here, Vivid Vulture, Watcher, Abrac, Wild Bristol, Matron, um, Alpha, and Brambleback, and then Primal, Rex, Cyst, and Crush Claw. So we need to find out what the chaos or divine price is per beast, put it into a universal currency type. Uh, we also need to find out what the divine to chaos ratio is, as well as the price of the memory. Once you have that information available, uh, you can see, all right, well, if you're guaranteed to get nine beasts per memory and the average drop per beast, uh, or sorry, the average um, distribution is one of each beast per memory, that means that all you have to do is add up the total amount of chaos right, for each beast, one of each one. And we can see right here that the total, th these are values uh, that are updated, by the way. These are uh, the market as it stands at this exact moment. Um, the total average value of one memory is 1,590.5 chaos, which converted to divines is 7.39 divines. Now we can see here that the uh, price of a harvest memory is 4.5 divs, which means that if you were to run this so low, um, and just from Harvest Beasts, every single memory that you run, you will profit 2.89 divines on average. Now, because these memories can be run on, whoops, because these memories can be run on white maps, 
uh, that are tier one or tier two, not only do you not need to have a high gear requirement, which is something that you can take advantage of particularly early on, since most of the people that are competing with you on the market are investing their currency into their character, you can largely forego this and put a bunch of money into memories um, and get as many of these as you can and kind of start snowballing currency that way. Um, since, you know, as long as you have enough DPS to kill mobs on a tier one, tier two, or maybe at most uh, tier three or four map, um, you just really just want to get your speed, make sure you don't die, and then just do these as quickly as possible. Uh, the rate of return that you will have in terms of profitability, divines per hour, whatever, uh, will be contingent on three factors. That is, uh, what is the obviously the price of the uh, beasts and the price of the memory, sale price and the purchasing price. Uh, the second factor will be um, how fast can you run a memory, right? How many memories can you run per hour? And the third thing will be how many party members you have. And I'll cover that part of it in a second. Um, but yes, as I mentioned, gear requirement, very low. And uh, because you only need to kill two beasts in the first map, three beasts in the second map, and four beasts in the third map, if you are able to quickly identify, uh, in particular visually, how to which ones are the harvest beasts, um, and uh, this will happen with some, you know, some practice or some um, experience running them, uh, it'll be quite easy to tell which ones are the harvest beasts. Um, they look exactly like they do. Uh, when you go and view them uh, right here, I think I have a couple of vultures. Yeah, so you see the vultures, um, the vivid beasts are always bright yellow. The wild beasts are always bright purple. And the primal beasts are always like bright blue. Uh, it's the, the same colors as the life force. So the vivid life force being yellow, wild being purple, and the primal being blue. Um, so if you can identify those, the entire purpose of entering these maps is to capture those beasts capture them as quickly as possible, and then exit and move on to the next map of the memory so you can repeat that process. Because of that, uh, you can do these memories. So all three maps, sometimes in as quick as two and a half or three minutes. Uh, I would say like a average speed would be somewhere around four minutes. And at the end of this, I will do one of them to show you some of the tricks that you can do to get them down um, quickly, as well as how to use a rejects and the menagerie. Um, but for now, just know that um, a very good time is about three minutes per memory. Average time is, you know, four to five. And of course, you know, you want to you want to um, cut down on the downtime in between. So things like bottling beasts, you'll typically do at the end, list them all at once, sell them all at once, buy all the memories at once, and then just kind of roll into it that way. Um, yeah, and so that is how uh, the three of those would work. Now, going back to the spreadsheet here, we can see uh, we've got the total average value of one memory uh, being 7.4 divines for a profit of by yourself, solo running these, 2.89 divines per memory. And as I just mentioned, you can run these, um, you know, in three minutes, average time, maybe say four minutes. Uh, doing that by itself would mean you can run. So you can see here one of the data points is how long, how many minutes does it take for you to run a memory? So here I entered four, which means we can do 15 per hour. And with the exact um, with the exact market conditions as they are right now, that means that if you run memories solo right now, you will make 43 divines, 43.46 divines profit per hour. Oops, sorry, my face is blocking this data. Sorry about that. Um, you will make 43.46 uh, divines per hour running it solo, uh, which is pretty crazy. Uh, you can see here another one of the things that I entered um, is what is the current price of a mirror of Calandra? Uh, you can see that it is 645. Um, and then you have time needed to farm a mirror solo. Right here, it is 14 hours. So 14 hours is something I, you know, because of streaming and, and YouTube and stuff, that that's, wouldn't be uncommon for me to play that amount in a day. Um, obviously for an average person, they're not playing 15 hours in a day. But um, over the course of a weekend, it's not unreasonable, even if you were doing it solo and even if doing it right now. Right. I, I'd also like to, to um, remind you guys when I was doing this, when I say three to five mirrors, the price of mirrors was not 645 divines. Uh, it was in like the 275 to 400 divine range. And so my capacity to buy those mirrors was obviously um, a little bit easier since the uh, the rate or the price of the um, uh, mirrors has inflated uh, significantly higher than other currency types uh, or faster, I should say. Um, but that being said, e even right now, three weeks in, um, it's still, you know, 14 hours to farm a mirror solo. 
Now, uh, there are ways that we can improve upon this. As I mentioned, there are three way, three elements that uh, will dictate how much currency per hour you're actually making. Um, that is, again, the price of the beast and the or the sale price of the beast and the cost of the memory. Um, but on top of that, and the, sorry, and the speed in which you run them. And the third element would be party members. Now, this is uh, a part of. Uh, sorry for these uh, little trades here. Um, the, the the understanding or the um, Consideration of, of how uh, group play. In fact, you know what? Actually, I'll just put on DND. Oh, never mind. After this trade, I will. Sorry. The reason I didn't want to put on DND, guys, is because I have um, several mirror items, and because there's a couple other guys on the team, I didn't want to miss a mirror service uh, through explaining this process here. And, um, you know, because other people's money is involved there, I, I thought that was would be rather selfish. Um, but I'll try to keep those distractions to a minimum. Anyways, I digress. They're done with the trade there. Um, party play. Party play with beasts is something that um, I think confuses a lot of people. Uh, so I'll do my best to explain it here. But um, the TLDR of it is that it can significantly magnify the currency you're having per hour. Uh, and there are a variety of ways in which you can do so. We've already established that uh, even by yourself solo, you can make a mirror once every 14 hours or 43 divines per hour right now. Again, that would be probably somewhere in the 7 to 8 hour range. Um, if we were talking about the, the mirror values I was mentioning, 275 to 400 divines. Um, playing solo, it would, again, be scaled down quite a bit in terms of how many hours that would take. Um, however, if we take a look back on the spreadsheet here, if we add um, additional party members, um, they do not get a 100% capture rate. That's another thing perhaps I should explain in case people are not aware of that. Uh, if you open a map or open a memory... Uh, you will have a 100% global capture for all of the beasts on that map. So um, it does not matter where you are located relative to where the beast is, as long as you have not released and are sitting in your hideout. Um, for every beast that is killed, you will, uh, regardless of the range, right? It doesn't matter if you're far, like proximity-wise, if you're close to it or not. Um, and it does not matter uh, that you will... Just broke a wine glass. Solid. Uh, that's what I get for drinking Coke Zero out of a wine glass. Gotta do my dishes. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, you, you will have a 100% capture rate no matter what. Um, so as long as that beast is killed and as long as you are in the map, you will capture it. So you are guaranteed the nine harvest beast uh, every map as well. Um, another thing to add to this is that you will occasionally get Krejcik Chimerals, Fenimal Plagued Arachnids, Ferric Wolf Alphas, um, you know, the ones that give you Aspect of the Cat, uh, spider etc um that do have some significant value as well uh in particular early on one of the ones one of the beasts that was quite lucrative um is the um sack of wine vulture which looks similar to a vivid vulture the sack of wine vulture gives you a six link um and for the first you know three or four days those can be worth you know 50 60 70 chaos um which you know at that point is pretty close to a divine um, and so those those are actually incredibly lucrative and those additional beasts that you'll get while running these um, They can add multiple divines uh, an hour uh, to your profitability, but for the sake of uh, replicability and um, Again, you could specifically codify uh, uh, numerically what uh, the net average return is uh, Just with harvest beasts, but uh, it should it should be mentioned that um, obviously there are other elements that will add to the actual currency you're making vis-a-vis uh, -vis actual map drops you know the items that drop currency items whatever um and uh uh also just the regular beasts that are not harvest related but we're going to specifically be focusing on harvest beasts for the purposes of this video as it is uh the part that will be the easiest for you guys to to translate into your own uh, gameplay um so um yes the party the person that opens the memory uh they will have a 100 percent capture rate and it does not matter the distance that they are. Now, if you had an additional party member to the group, uh, this is not the same for them. Uh, for each additional party member that is in the group, they will have a 20% capture rate per beast. Which means that for each beast you kill, um, they will have a 1 in 5 chance to capture it. Now, since there are 9 harvest beasts in a single memory, that means that per memory for each additional party member, uh, they will on average capture 1.8% beasts now since we don't know what those beasts are going to be how they're going to distribute in terms of you know is it going to be three uh, vivid vultures or three matriarchs right we don't know um and so what we do to figure out 
uh, the value out of that is again we add, we add up the individual uh, uh, price of each uh, harvest piece and then we just simply divide it by nine because that's how many there are in total and that will give you the average sale price of a beast so the average price of a harvest beast currently is 176 chaos right and so since each additional party member will capture 1.8 beasts per memory that means you then take 176 and multiply that by 1.8 which means that for each additional party member per memory you will get an additional 318.1 chaos now that is assuming when i say you will get that is assuming um that person is giving all of his beasts to you um or his or hers i should say um and that might not be the case uh for myself um initially that uh, that was not how things were going but towards the end of it once i got a team behind me um i i was about halfway through the bow craft before i actually put together a, a group of guys uh, and we started kind of working in, in unison um at that point you know when we would do memories it would be six of us and you know so instead of just it being uh the 2.89 uh, divines profit per memory right 318 chaos per additional party member translates to 1.47 divines per memory right which means that um the profit per memory in a full party because you do not have the additional input cost right like the, it's a static cost for the the uh the memory itself right so having additional party members doesn't uh, bear with it any additional cost um that means the, on a per unit basis right instead of making a profit of 2.89 divines in a solo party right just running it by yourself uh in a full group if you are sharing the beasts the uh, the average profit is 10.29 divines now that means that the average return sorry is 14.7 divs and then minus the cost of memory at 4.5 divines uh would be 10.29 divines profit per memory as i mentioned memories if you're a pretty average to mid-range group would be once every four minutes so that would end up as being a profit rate of 154 divines profit per hour now as i mentioned earlier on in the league mirrors are you know 200 250 275 300 uh, divines right uh so you can quite literally make a mirror every hour and a half two hours doing this um and that is exactly what we started doing at a certain point and the upper threshold of you know five mirrors uh per day uh we actually that was that was when i was doing it individually once we started putting all of our uh you know five guys or six guys rather myself plus five uh we're running these um and we all pulled the beast together i sell them on one account uh, of course and bulk sell them uh before we repeat the process um that number became astronomically higher and that's how i was able to uh, sustain a lot of the cost associated with the mirror crafts um however um you know you might be listening to this right now and say belton all right that's kind of cool good for you but who gives a fuck i don't have five guys that are going to feed me their beasts you know lol lol xd belton gets carried blah 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 um you know, memeing, memeing aside, uh, there are actually ways that you can work around this. Um, even if you don't have a group that is working on a singular goal together, uh, there are ways that you can have party members join where it is mutually beneficial, but you can increase your rate of return per hour. So uh, what I was doing prior to the, um, you know, establishment of that group, and this is uh, when I started entering that three to five mirror per day range, um, we can see here that... Uh, you know, for each additional party member that joins, their average uh, profit per memory without having to pay any cost is 1.47 divines, right? So that would mean that that person um, could be making upwards um, of, uh, you know, 15 times that. So that would be uh, 50 plus four, about 20, 20 divines an hour, 15 to 20 divines an hour in profit, right? Now, if you're in the first week or the second week of the league, um, most people are making, you know, maybe a couple divs. Like on, if they're if they're very good, maybe five divs, six divs an hour. Now, I know this I know this league in the context of it right now. People are you know just shitting out currency everywhere. But uh, harken back to a couple weeks ago before people really understood this. Uh, you know how how to juice the the uh, the, the league of, um, mechanic and all that stuff. Uh, that just simply wasn't the case at the time. Uh, currency was not. Um, 
you know, as plentiful as it is, is now. And as is often the case in most new leagues, people don't, uh, you know, know fully how to flush them out, uh, usually for a couple of weeks into it. Um, but 20 divines an hour with having no risk on their side uh, is pretty crazy, right? So if you find someone who is making, let's say, three or four divs an hour, uh, and you propose to them, hey, if you want to join me in my memory that I'll pay for, completely free for you, right? Um, you can keep all of the beasts, Right. Um, if you just give me, let's say, vivid vultures and wild um, bristle matrons. So there's nine total beasts. If you give me two of the ones that drop, you can keep the other seven. And because you have this specific information here, you can actually specifically tell them what their profit rate would be. Right. And so in that case, if you take away a vivid vulture and a wild bristle matron, right, um, you can then see, all right, well, here are the seven remaining beasts. You know, this is the average per this. We're doing this many per hour. It ends up being, let, let's say, uh, 7 to 10 divs an hour or 12 divs an hour, something like that. It's probably double or triple what they were making before. And they don't have any uh, upfront cost or risk associated with it. And, and um, you know, take my word for it. People are often very, very keen to do this um, because people's understanding um, of, of risk management is often askew. And if, if this video does nothing else, hopefully it can... Um, get some of you guys to take that initiative think of it kind of like uh, someone who owns a business right uh you and your employees right you, you might hire a guy uh who was working at a job where he made 50k a year and uh you know you, you pay him 70k a year he's super happy because he's got twenty thousand dollars a year more on his um you know in his salary uh, however by adding that employee he might be generating you know 150k for your company right and you might have 10 of these employees and so on a per person basis, the, the boss, um, you know, is doing the work of one man. However, he's getting paid for the labor of 15 people, but that's because he took the time to organize it and put it all together and blah, 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 and take that initiative, right? Um, I, this is kind of the root of capitalism, risk versus reward. Uh, and in leagues in particular, people, and especially early on, people have a pretty poor understanding or a poor grasp of um, their finances and, and a lot of people, I think, struggle um, to really kind of grasp, you know, where they should be putting things to best set themselves up for future success. Um, and so this isn't this isn't a situation where you're taking advantage of anyone. Um, it's mutually beneficial. You are also benefiting by their existence being there, but um, they have no risk. They have no upfront cost. And uh, people will be very happy to do this. So that was what I was doing for probably uh, 10 days, eight, 8 to 10 days. Uh, I would get groups of sometimes from trade, sometimes from global channels, but usually from Guild or Discord or stream. Uh, just ask if anyone wanted to join, right? So I would get a group, five people would join me. I would buy, let's say, 10 or 20 memories, right? And then every five memories or so, I'd say, hey, guys, can you check to see if you got any matriarch or sorry, wild bristle matrons or vivid vultures? And if they did, they would bottle them, trade them to me. And uh, um, so not only would I have the profit per memory that we we're seeing right here, where it's 2.89 divines per memory, but on top of that, because every memory on average, you're gonna get one of each one, right? We have five additional party members with a 20% capture rate. That means that it quite literally just doubles everything. So instead of getting nine beasts per memory, the average goes to 18 beasts per memory. And since there's an even distribution of each beast, that means that, and and since we'll be taking all of the vultures and all of the, the wild bristle matrons and the average would be one matron and one vulture per memory, that means that by having a full group like that, we are literally getting one additional um, matron and one additional vulture every four minutes. If we're to look at the values as they are right now, a vivid vulture is 1.8 divines and a wild bristle matron is, is 1.6 divines. So that would be 3.4 divines extra for us every four minutes. So Tom's... Um, Times uh, 15, that would be, uh, what's that? 3.4 times 15. 3.4 times 15. 51 divs, and then it was what? 43 divines per hour profit otherwise. So instead of making 43 divines per hour by yourself, you're now making 94 divines profit per hour by taking the initiative to get additional people in the group. Now, some of you listening to this might say, oh, well, you know, how, how is that fair that you're making 94 divines profit per hour when the people in your group are making 10 divines profit per hour? And again, that's that's where this understanding uh, of the numbers and taking the initiative to organize things there, right? You're not forcing anyone's hand. Um, and you'd be surprised how many people are willing to just take that, that step to improve their things, right? 
wealth in this game is always relative. Uh, if somebody, again, if somebody's making two divs an hour, three divs an hour, and they're struggling, and you offer them something that they don't have to put any currency into, that, that is run on a tier one, tier two, tier three white map where they don't have to worry about dying, don't have to worry about their performance, and they can make, you know, 10 divs an hour. For most people, that is a crazy, crazy offer that they'll be more than willing to do. And, um, you know, they'll thank you for it after as well. And so even though you are obviously benefiting a lot, um, again, I, I like to remind people because in situations like these, uh, you know, when it comes to trade and stuff like that, often people leave comments saying it's like, you know, it's it's exploitative or it's uh, it's misleading. Um, for myself, what I, what I can say is that I, I don't agree with those kinds of moral equiv equivocations, but um, I always was streaming this stuff too. I, I never did this in darkness and it was often people from stream. And so uh, it was, you know, I was telling people what I was doing as I was doing it. Um, and everyone was fully aware of the fact that I benefited more, but because I took the time to buy the memories and organize the group, get everyone onto a voice chat and discord, make sure everyone knew what we were doing and blah, blah, blah. Right. There are additional uh, elements of uh, labor, so to speak, that go into that and, uh, you know, risk reward. So it, it's not a situation where people were uh, completely naive and, uh, being taken advantage of everyone was a fully and willing participant uh, in this situation um <clears throat> so that that was for myself um i know that you guys probably aren't uh, overly invested in uh, my specific scenario but thinking of ways that you can use these kinds of memories either ne at next league start or even right now to your advantage again they are incredibly lucrative as it stands currently by yourself but if you really want to take things to the next level, um, again, the highest rate of return, as I pointed out, would be if you have a full group who are all singularly focused on making currency and pooling that currency together for something like a mirror craft where everyone has this singular goal and focus. Um, that was a rate, given the current market values, of 154 divines profit per hour. Um, and then solo, so just doing it by yourself at your own pace, blah, 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 43 divines profit per hour. But this is, again, it's something that anyone could do. Uh, there's nothing stopping anybody who's watching this video from doing this. Uh, you can make 94 divines profit per hour, which would mean that you can make a mirror, even at today's market, basically once every six hours, um, uh, simply by getting people to join you and asking for a, a couple of beasts. Now, the beast that you ask for, um, or the, the stipulations by which you get people to join the group, will vary person to person. That This was specifically what I was asking for early on. Um, the Wild Bristle Matron, the reason I asked for that is because, as I mentioned earlier on in the video, Wild Bristle Matron, since they give a meta mod, they tend to have their cost pinned relatively close to the value of a meta mod, right? Um, so early on, like in the first week, Wild Bristle Matrons are pretty much always the most expensive one. Uh, since again, the minimum value that they can add opportunity cost wise is one divine. Whereas all of the other beasts tend to be, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 chaos, simply because people aren't really using them yet. Awakened gems aren't around. There aren't any triple synth web. Uh, there's no items that have three synthesis mods. So nobody wants to use vultures yet. There's not, there's no watcher's eyes to use hellions on. Um, the use case for those beasts simply does not exist. However, the meta mod is very popular. And then the reason I asked for vultures was because I knew uh, like far in advance that I would be going for the bow and I knew that I would need vultures for that. And so um, right off the jump, uh, you know, once I picked, once I picked up the base, uh, which was the T T1 uh, flat lightning on the spine bow here, right? The triple synth T1 flat lightning on the spine bow. That was the starting position that I got this at. At that point, not only did I have multiple mirrors and currency, but I had also actually saved up, um, I think, two and a half mirrors worth of vultures simply by getting them from maps and keeping the ones that I had. Uh, because the market price or the sale price of those vultures was very low at the beginning of the league, I didn't think that it was worthwhile uh, to actually sell them for currency since uh, in my head I was like, well, it's kind of circular logic to buy, to sell vultures, to get more currency, to buy memories so I could get vultures and then eventually craft. Um, and so the vultures were basically a uh, piggy bank of resources that I would then not have to get in the future. And then the the memories uh, not only paid for themselves, they're profitable, but then the additional uh, matrons that I was getting from the, the party members who decided to join me with the proposition or the quid pro quo I just mentioned, 
um, those would be kind of like the profit margin there. Um, and again, when you're getting a divine, a divine and a half um, additional every three to four minutes um, on top of a memory that's already probably a net profit of one div, even without the vulture, because those are quite low on the, at the beginning of the league. Um, again, with the specifics of that, uh, it's just important that you would, um, you know, t to find out the, the exact values, you just update these things on the chart and you can do the math because, uh, again, because it's such a defined uh, outcome base, right? There's only nine total beasts, always nine each map. Um, you can, again, very, very specifically uh, get a f um, estimate for, you know, is this event going to be net profitable, net neutral, or net negative? Um, and you can very, uh, you know, very, very specifically uh, target that accordingly. Um, so yeah, that, that was really how we, uh, how we did that. So, uh, the wild bristle matrons were huge. Um, the, at the starting point, uh, we did have to invest a small amount of currency into our character, but, um, because the maps are such a low, uh, low tier, the gear requirement was next to nothing. Um, this was the bow I was using, um, up until I crafted the mirror bow. Uh, this dropped in a map. It has... Uh, four link and 800, 753 EDPS. Uh, I was using a uh, Karawi, or no, sorry, a high res um, Jade Amulet. Um, I was using the uh, Prism Weave Belt. Um, I had uh, a Hoop of All and a Taming as my rings. Um, a Quiver that was just something that dropped on the ground, nothing special. And then for my gloves, I had the, uh, the Rampage ones. Um, so all of that gear, literally, I think my gear was at like two divines might've been overshooting it. Um, if it were to come from anything, it would have been the taming, um, for boots I was using as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention boots for boots. I just had like a 30% move speed, uh, whatever, whatever boot. And then, uh, flasks, uh, of course, we just used a quicksilver, uh, silver diamond. And, um, I think probably amethyst or whatever. And, uh, we would use the, <clears throat> um, ba 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 the use uh use when charges reach full right this was how we got our res cap using a flask like this flasks are super super cheap early on uh, i think i made a video about that already um you could get a perfect flask like this for about eight chaos um so a lot of the deficiencies that we would have had in gear for example filling out our resistances or um you know lack of move speed or not having mage blood or headhunter any of that stuff um largely was taken care of by this um on top of that having party members join you for these memories it's again, it's not like they're difficult because they're very low map tiers. Um, but you can also or, like getting aura swapping, right? Like if you get people coming uh, to join you for, let's say, um, a bunch of 20 memories. Um, if I were if we're in a group of four dead eyes, which was not uncommon, uh, rather than all four of us running grace and like Arctic armor, grace and herald device or whatever, we get one person to put on haste. One person can put on. Uh, you know, purity of elements, one person can put on whatever. And so, um, you know, the uh, the totality became greater than the sum of its parts, not only in a currency sense um, and in a speed sense and kind of keeping each other regulated with pace, but also vis-a-vis um, -vis things like or, uh, uh, you know, aura sharing. Um, so, yeah, in a theoretical sense, I think I've covered pretty much everything I have to here. Um, I will show you guys quickly um, some smaller nuanced things or performance ways. Um, in, in terms of how to run these properly. Uh, I'm going to do this a little bit slower than I would because there's some stuff I want to explain, um, but I'm just going to point out a couple things on how you can actually, uh, performance-wise, do these um, in the uh, the best way possible. Now, obviously, load screens are a uh, uh, can be actually a pretty big element to that too. Uh, but the first thing you're going to want to do when you come into one of the memories is press H, right? That's going to bring you here. You're going to want to come down to the Beastiary tab, right? Then you're going to come down here to Captured Beast. Then you're going to press Control F, which will uh, put it on. It'll take you down to Filter Beast, and then you're just going to type a bunch of nonsense, right? H, and then type a bunch of nonsense like that, right? Now, if I click off screen and press H again, it'll close that. But if I press H at any point throughout the map, right, you'll see that it brings up the Beast area again, and it brings up this screen. Now, the reason we type a bunch of this random crap like this is because it'll now it now gives us basically a blank slate in our menagerie and every beast that we kill um, and capture will now show up here and since we're the one opening the memory that means that we can see it uh, specifically as things are being killed and we go throughout the the, uh, the memory um, what even if you can't identify the harvest beast visually 
uh, you can just press H and see if it was a Harvest Beast. Um, the uh, ambition being to just kill, as I mentioned, there's um, there's two Harvest Beasts on the first map, uh, three on the second, and four on the third. Um, being able to just look like that and see uh, is obviously very advantageous. Um, with respect to layout, this is the one I believe is the best. You'll notice I actually started off on a, so there we go, Vivid Abrac. I didn't actually see that one. That's one of the ones that's hard to identify because it's a scorpion and it kind of burrows in the ground. Um, so again, the uh, having that Menagerie thing up there, very useful. And right there, uh, bu -bu -bu. there we go. That's a, that was a wild or primal Sis caller. So we know that we got the Abrac of the Sis caller. That memory is now done. We don't have to kill the boss. We don't have to do any of that stuff. And bu -bu -bu. Sorry for the sale interruption again. Uh, you are going to need bestiary orbs as well. Um, it doesn't actually matter if you do those as they come or if you do them at the end. Uh, but bestiary orbs, because when I was running these memories, I was surprised a lot of people didn't actually know like where to get those. Again, just in case anyone's new watching this, um, to get a bestiary orb, you go to your menagerie here uh, and you talk to Einhart and he will sell them for one chaos each. You have to open your stash like that to actually have it actively buy them out of your stash. Uh, but now you can buy the bestiary orbs, one C each, and two bottle beasts. So in that case there, we just got a cis caller and a um, a uh, vivid abrac. Uh, we're not going to bottle them into each time independently, but just so you understand how that works in case you've never done any uh, beast stuff before. Take the bestiary orb, right-click it, and then left-click the beast that you want to remove. Boom, now we have a primal cis caller. Uh, if you are doing these as the person who is opening the memory, um, I suggest that you both bottle in bulk and sell in bulk. Uh, when when I, I can't stress to you how quickly Beast will sell, it can be actually very overwhelming when people are messaging you to buy them, in particular early on. Uh, you will get spammed like literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times. Um, and so it can be a little bit, uh, for, uh, I struggle with like that, um, you know, to, uh, that level of like micromanagement and chat, trying to figure out who's buying what uh, and all that kind of stuff. And so I'd much rather just put, you know, 50 Vulture or 50 uh, Matrons up for sale at once and then invite the guy who says he wants to buy 10 of them instead of trying to like track 10 individual one, one beast orders at once and having to leave maps and all that kind of stuff. So uh, that's, uh, that's something I recommend uh, both bottling and bulking uh, sales uh, when uh, needed. So again, so we're now on the uh, second map of the memory here. Again, first thing we're gonna do, press H, come over to Bestiary, Control F, type a bunch of random crap, right? Close that, bring up our mini map here, the tab, right? And on this one, because it's the second memory, we're gonna have three uh, red, or sorry, three harvest beasts. <clears throat> that is not a harvest beast, so we can skip it. Uh, that is, I believe, that's either a Krejcik Squid or a Vivid, yep, yeah, or sorry, Krejcik Watcher. Uh, some beasts have, there, there are uh, Harvest Beasts and Regular Beasts that scare, they share like a skin type. So they look, they, they look the same, but like the coloring of them will be different. Um, again, like a Vivid Vulture has a Sack of Wine Vulture. Uh, right there, we just killed the Krejcik Sand Spitter, which looks a lot like a Vivid Abarak. Uh, the Krejcik Watcher looks a lot like a, a Vivid Watcher. Um... You know, especially in party play, if you have other people in your group with all of the... That's a Primal Rex Matriarch, so that's one out of three. That's our first Harvest Beast. Uh, but yeah, especially in party play, when you have all of the skill effects going at once, um, it can be quite difficult to identify beasts visually, um, just because of MTXs and all, all of the uh, the visual clutter on screen. This is a Vivid Abarak right there. So that's two out of three. So we see we got the Primal there and the Vivid Abarak. Right. Uh, by the way, if at any point, like let's say you kill like eight beasts and not a single one of those a harvest beast yet, if you don't want to scroll through, so in this case we've got quite a few. You can do Control F, type a bunch of random crap, and it'll go away again, um, and it'll just refresh. So, like okay, here when we capture this guy, right, boom, goes again. So you can update that throughout too if you're keeping to. This is a primal sis caller here. So there you see that's our third harvest beast, and the map is done. 
the harvest piece ha happened to be at the end of the map there and again as i as i said uh, i'm obviously doing this far 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 slower than i would uh, uh normally but just, just try and cover the bases here for uh for people that uh, might want to do this so they can do it properly um so yeah making sure that you enter the rejects when it goes in uh is important uh rejects by the way it's r-e-g-e-x i'm not not saying like a r-e-j-e-c-t-s uh, i've mentioned that on youtube before and people have asked what that meant uh rejects is just this here um this search bar when i say rejects i mean entering this um you can also use this one by the way vivid primal wild uh, the the bar that is in uh, separating them there is the uh, shift and the, the key that's above the enter key uh, if you do that it'll show you the harvest beasts right since they are all vivid primal wild so you can see we've got a primal syscaller primal rex wild brambleback we got uh, seven vivid vultures and two vivid abrax at the end i recommend doing this one when you bottle them up uh, throughout the maps you can have this up here um, the problem is of course if you enter this at the beginning of the map um, it's going to show you all of the harvest beasts that you currently have in your menagerie. So unless you're bottling the harvest beasts at the end of each map, um, this is not what you, you you don't want to do this at the beginning of it. Uh, what you want to do, as I, I've mentioned a couple of times, the control F, type a bunch of random shit. And then um, again, as, as you get more accustomed to recognizing them visually um, or just checking uh, on the uh, menagerie as it pops up, uh, you'll be able to, to gauge where you are and other people in the party will too. Now, uh, on a more practical level, um, in terms of how do you improve your capture rates, how do you improve your rates per hour, um, you know, aside from um, me just sort of explaining how I made the currency, uh, in a practical sense, um, like words of wisdom, I guess, to pass on on how, how to do this best yourselves, if anyone is going to pursue this line. Um, you know, we mentioned there's there's three things that control how much currency you're going to make per hour with this. And that's the um, how fast you run the memories, how many people are in the group, and then the, the price of the beast slash cost of the memories uh, themselves. Um, the rate that you can run these um, is going to be highly uh, uh, correlated to the organization level of the group. So if you can get a group together on a, a voice chat on a Discord, that's incredibly helpful. That's, that's one thing I would say. Um, people don't need to, because sometimes people are shy or you know, they don't want to talk to people randomly on the internet. Um, as long as you, the person who is opening the memory, as long as they can hear you, um, that's that's all that's important. Just um, from my experience, un until you kind of clarify this with people who are new to running memories, uh, people tend to run maps with like the mini map open and they tend to run towards visual markers, right? So they would see something like the Wildwood and they run towards that. Or right there, you see how there's that yellow beast? Um, I might run towards that. And so it's not that big of a deal on something like Strand where it's completely linear because the group is pretty much always going to stay together. However, and this is very important to know, um, there is a capture range for beasts, um, not for the map opener, but for additional party members. Um, and so the, the range for that is approximately... So the, the space that you can see on a screen, so from down here in the bottom right corner to like up here in the top left corner, if you're to take that distance and multiply it by about 1.5, so like this total distance and then like halfway through the screen kind of right here and add that to it, that's approximately how far away you can be, like your additional party members can be from the beast when it is captured by Einhart to be in range to also receive the capture themselves. Um, a lot of the time when uh, other people try to replicate these because people in my guild or people who watch stream will see what I'm doing and, and will often try and do it themselves and they, they don't succeed as well. And, and that's the, one of the big reasons is because the group is not moving together. Um, so the reason I mentioned voice chat as being very important is because even if the other people can't talk, if you have someone who is uh, the party leader or like kind of quarterback, right, that everyone uses as a marker to follow, Right. So instead of chasing after like little visual indicators on the mini map, they all just chase after follow Belton. Right. Doesn't matter what's going on. Just follow Belton on the mini map. That's the only thing that's important, because, again, these are tier one, tier two, tier three. Um, or in this case, uh, I, I suggest doing um, fields as a starting point, uh, which is a tier two map, which means your third um, map of the memory will be a tier four map. 
Uh, the reason, by the way, that I think Fields is a good one to start off with, first of all, Fields is a good map, but the uh, Ramparts and Strand are both very good layouts, and those are the only two it can go to after that. And then um, it can either go to Cemetery or Colonnade or Grotto, right? So if it goes Strand, you're getting Grotto, but if it goes Ramparts, you get Colonnade, which is a good layout, and Cemetery, which is a good layout. So there's no potential really for bad layout. Grotto is not a fantastic layout, but um, one, two, three, four... Five out of six of them are really, really good, uh, both in pathing and they're, you know, they're, they're just nice and quick. So that that is where I would recommend doing it. Um, it's also important, too, to remember if you do have void stones to remove your void stones. Uh, you can run them on higher tiers if you want to. There's, as I mentioned, there's no reason to. It doesn't have any impact on the beasts. Uh, in fact, it actually has a negative impact on things like Krejcik's, which have a higher rate of spawning. Uh, but that's a topic for another video. Um, yeah, so that's where I would start off. Um, if you can get people on Discord voice and just get them to understand that they should be following you, not chasing things off, uh, not only will it make the memories faster in themselves, just because, you know, it's, it's easier to kind of have a team, that teamwork, uh, when people, when there's like visual, um, uh, or, you know, uh, sorry, auditory, uh, leadership being given rather than people like stopping to type in chat, be like, follow me wrong way, wrong way. That's obviously not very efficient. Um, but also being able to call out beast, right? If you're, if you're the person who's opening memories, uh, I would say that the onus or the responsibility typically will fall on you to be the one who is in charge of mentioning when. So here we go. We got two red beasts. There we go. That's a wild bristle matron right there. I can identify that by its skin texture, right? So wait, boom, wild bristle matron. So now that I know that, I when if I've got people on Discord voice with me, I go matron, right? And since this is the third map, map of the memory, I would say matron one out of four, right? Because there's four harvest beasts. And that's the first one. So that gives people kind of like an auditory indicator of how far progressed we are. Um, and that's like, even though that might seem like it's a, a little silly, those kinds of things are where you're really going to take stuff to the next level. Uh, a group that has like little to no coordination, uh, where people are just kind of running in the map, chasing after visual indicators, um, and they don't have anyone kind of calling out the beasts, you know, it might take them 30 seconds more or 40 seconds more per map. Right, but that adds, um, you know, that adds an extra minute or two to each memory, right? And if you're running four minute memories and you're going up to six minute memories, all of a sudden you go from uh, 15 memories per hour to 10 memories per hour. So you're actually losing like 33% of your net profit, which in the, uh, you know, with the values we gave earlier would be close to 35 divs an hour, simply because you're not on voice chat, right? So uh, I'm not saying that voice chat is absolutely mandatory. But at least having a group that's competent enough or having someone who can make those indications uh, is, is very, very important to uh, being able to scale this up to a, a level where you can uh, really exceed, uh, you know, exceed uh, any other really possible uh, options. Uh, in this case here, sorry, just uh, I was in the, in the middle of dialogue there, but uh, we got the Primal Rex Matriarch, right? So um, again, if I had a group of people with me, I would then say two out of four Primal Rex, right? We would then keep progressing through here. Boom, boom, boom. That's not a harvest beast. Keep moving. Uh, this is one where... Nope, that's a sand spitter. I believe that's a vulture. Yep, vivid vulture. So here, this is the vivid vulture here. So you see how it's got that yellow skin? It looks very much like it does on the, the menagerie thing. Um, but the vivid vulture, she called that out there. So you see, capture the vulture. So now we're three out of four. And that's a vivid abrac. So that's going to give us four out of four. Right, so that'll capture in a sec. Boom, Vivid Abrac, four out of four. All right, and so even though we've got all this additional part of the map memory left, right, by having someone um, who is making sure that they're, like, first of all, having the person who is kind of the way, like, the the, the marker, right, make that person party leader so that when people have their mini maps up, it's easier to follow them visually. All right, so that's part part one. Part two is having someone who can have the, the rejects up to be able to, um, or who has the visual capacity to identify them so they can say, okay, uh, harvest beast number one, harvest beast number two, uh, harvest beast three, whatever. And then uh, I like to say clear. I usually call it clear when it's done. And then I will always be the one that pops a portal, right? So like when I'm running this with my group, we've obviously, you know, because I've run hundreds and hundreds of these, um, I've developed a pretty good system and a lot of people come back to run them with me. Cause as I mentioned, you know, e even though I have a great, uh, deal of benefit from it, uh, for a lot of people, being a just a participant in these is far more currency per hour than they make normally. So 
Uh, there are people that often come back and uh, volunteer to join these groups. And so we get into a rhythm of certain things. Um, typically, my, my uh, you know, call signs, so to speak, would be, okay, one out of two, two out of two, clear. And then I ask everyone else to not open portals, right? And so if they see a portal open, it's from me. I wait for everyone to leave. Then I exit. Then I open the next memory. Boom, get it going, right? And so you get into this rhythm and this habit. Um, and that way you can kind of really cut down on that downtime. Um, the, uh, yeah, so the important parts there are again, making sure the group is a close enough proximity. Uh, it's very, very, very important. If, if, um, people are outside of range of the beast captures, uh, it very much defeats the purpose of having additional party members there. Uh, if they can't even capture the beasts, what's the point, right? Um, the second thing is, um, making sure that you have that party leader so that people have an indicator to follow, uh, the rejects so that you can see the beasts as they're captured. And then having someone who is um, calling out uh, the beast. Now, I know it's not practical as, as much as like in an ideal scenario, everyone would have voice chat and be willing to go on Discord and, and blah, blah, blah. I recognize that uh, the YouTube audience watching this as well as the game at large, you know, different parts of the world. Some people are shy or introverted or whatever. Um, maybe you don't have uh, that many relationships or friends in the game. You know, maybe you think this is just me being completely ludicrous to even suggest these things and streamer privilege or whatever. Um, I recognize that there's, you know, there's always a, a million reasons why something couldn't be done. Um, but at the very least, just have, uh, you could have someone in the group, even in a case like that, where you don't have a uh, voice, if you can have someone who's in just in party chat, right? Uh, writing like one, two, oh, sorry, like one, two, clear or whatever it is right or like one out of three or one out of two one out of three now if someone's typing that person shouldn't be the party leader obviously because the party leader would be the one that people are following to make sure they're all together but because again these are tier one tier two tier three or tier four maps um it's not like you need the dps of every group member right so you can have someone whose job is basically to just like report those things um in in chat uh if if texting or if uh, typing is the only option rather um, so there's there's always kind of creative ways to sort of uh, uh, you know get around these uh, uh, you know quote unquote issues. Um, what I'll do right now, since um, it was maybe hard to kind of grasp how that would look, um, I think we're already at about an hour for this video, so um, I, I realize that it's a bit of a deeper dive here, but um, I do think it's important that uh, you know we cover this in its entirety. So anyone who wants to revisit this can. Um, uh, can have a good frame of reference for, uh, uh, you know, what to do. And, and uh, uh, as I mentioned as well, the uh, the spreadsheet here, guys. Um, what, what I'm going to do right now, sorry, I got a couple of thoughts going at once. I'm going to run a memory silently. I'm going to shut my voice and I'm just going to run one with a stopwatch on to show you what it would look like when it's just being optimally done without stopping. Um, and then at the end, I'll make some sort of summarizing howdy-do and ask you guys to subscribe and support my channel because if you're not subject what are you doing man um but uh yeah I, I will make this public um this spreadsheet i'm not very good with computers or tech in general so it did take me quite a while to put it together but it is functional now um i have formatted in a way that the only thing that you guys have to do right you might have to do file make a copy like this so that you can edit it um but uh at that point all you have to do is enter either so don't put both, right? So either enter, if the the beast is listed in divines, put, uh, you know, the divine value, not div divine and then chaos, because that'll, that'll count it twice. So either in divine or chaos, you know, enter that there. And then um, this will automatically convert it to chaos there. And then these are all, these will automatically do the calculations. Uh, the only points of data that you have to enter on this are the yellow Anything that has this yellow is a place where you need to enter data. So how long does it take you to finish a memory? What is the current price of a mirror? How many people are additionally in your party? If it's not just you, right? What is the current chaos to divine ratio? How much does the memory cost in divines? And then what is the, the price of each beast? Those are the only things you've got to enter. And so at no, no matter what stage of the league it is, whether it's this league, next league, uh, today, tomorrow, whatever, um, you will be able to edit and adjust this and just enter those values as they change. And this will give you the uh, resultant information. Um, on the bottom here, I included uh, some other little tidbits. Um, you can see each memory has three maps. Each memory has nine harvest beasts. 
Map one has two Harvest Beasts, map two has three, map three has four. There are nine total Harvest Beasts, three Vivid, three Wild, and three Primal. They are equally weighted. This means over time you will average one of each beast per memory. There is no benefit to running higher tier or juice maps with respect to Harvest Beast capture rates. A tier one white map is equally as effective as an eight mod Turbo Juice T16. Profitability will be contingent on speed that they are run, party size, and the price of memories and beasts at the time that you run them. Using the calculator provided above, you can determine those values specifically. This spreadsheet will automatically calculate the results for the situations on the right if you enter the data needed. The data entry, the data entry points are marked by cells that are yellow. When full group rates of return are mentioned, it is assuming that all beasts are being pooled and sold for a singular source, e.g. a group of friends. So when it says here, um, uh, profit per hour, full party, uh, that's, again, talking about six people altogether. If you want to find out profit per memory with just like one other party member or two, or if you want to break it apart, there's a little separate section for that down there. Um, but th this, aside from the explanation, which I'm sure some of you uh, didn't need, uh, the big takeaway from this and hopefully something that can be helpful for you guys uh, for time to come because there's uh, like this will work in any league um, and uh, in perpetuity. Hopefully that this can actually be a quite a helpful resource for you guys. Uh, I have brought up memories many, many times in the past and every single time I do and the comments are always, does this still work? Does it work in this league? Is it good to do it now? What's the profit rate per hour, right? And so uh, I thought by putting this together for you guys, uh, you now have a resource where uh, you don't have to do any guesswork and um, you know uh, you don't even have to really format too much. Just find out the price of a couple of things and it'll tell you straight up uh, what it is and then you can make a decision, an informed decision whether or not it's worth your time. So that is something, again, that I will make uh, available. Ooh, something I will make available um, in the description box below at the uh, end of the video here and um uh what we're going to be doing now as i mentioned sorry whoo, you feel my voice is leaving um after i sell these jewels here we are going to i'm just going to run a memory silently so you can just kind of see how i would do it without uh, stopping every 10 seconds to explain myself um mm -hmm. <laughs> God damn, that guy's got really slow. See that load speed? Jesus. Oh my god, he entered the map. Uh, sorry, sorry, YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he's an XD user. Special place in hell for people that say XD. All right. Boom, boom, bada boom, bada bing. All right, the party is cleared out. We're ready to go. Um, I, I believe I've thoroughly covered the bases on how these memories work. Um, we'll do a quick summation at the end, but uh, just just for fun's sake here, we'll see how quickly we can pop one off. And so I'll uh, once we uh, load in here, I'll start that timer, and uh, it'll only be a couple of minutes, but. Give you guys um, a better idea of what like the pace uh, would be um, doing these in a in a group. You. I actually made a mistake before we started here. I forgot to put on like a quicksilver of uh, uh, the the hair or whatever it is, the one that has the move speed suffix. You have a life regen quicksilver on right now. That's a vivid watcher. One out of two. Two vivid watchers. Two out of two.
That's 2.8 divines on the first map of the memory, by the way. Those are 1.4 div each right now. That's a Vivid Abrac, 1 out of 3. That's a Wild Hellion Alpha, 2 out of 3. That is not hard how this goes. And again, when you're in a group, you'll move faster too. See, even with my own visual clutter, I have a hard time identifying the beast at times. Uh, especially, I'm, I'm using inspired learning right now, so. Uh, sometimes it teleports. That's a sys caller, 3 to 3. We're at 2 minutes. When you get the colonnade recommendation I have specifically for this map, uh, find the back wall. The starting point is always like right there. There we go. <laughs> Case in point, vulture right there. Um, the the starting portal is always right beside a like if you go one direction, it'll lead into like the depth of the map, and then the other direction will be like pretty close to um, an edge, like a back edge. There always seem to be a couple of beasts that are like right on that back edge of the wall. So if you go out from Colonnade and you find yourself entering the, the longer stretch of the map, um, I would recommend backtracking and just clearing out that first corner there. A Wild Bristle Matron, a Vivid Vulture. Uh, that is a Wild Brambleback and that is a Vivid Watcher. Oh, I'm sorry, that was a Kratic Squid. Correction. That is a Wild Pelion Alpha. Clear. And done. 339. So that's what that would look like. Uh, as, a, as a point of note there, uh, what our beasts were on that one, guys. That was actually a pretty good one. It was uh, two Hellions. Vulture. Two uh, matrons. Uh, we had two watchers in the first one. A uh, cis caller. And a one aberrant. That is 3.8D. Uh, 1.8D. Uh, 3.2D. Or 2.8D. 15 chaos and we'll just ignore these ones for too cheap. All right, that's one div, uh, four div, six div, uh, seven div, 10 div, 11.6 divines. So that would be a 7.1 divine profit that we just made in three minutes and 39 seconds solo from that one memory. So you can imagine when you have a group with you um, one of the cool things, again, the distribution is never, it's not like every single memory is one, one vivid, uh, one of each vivid, one of each primal, one of each Rex, or, or sorry, one of each wild. Um, it just en ends up over time looking like that. Uh, when you have a group of six people, sometimes you get like, let's say like three matron or sorry, three matrons or like four vultures in one single memory. And then at the end of the memory, when people give you, uh, the ones that you're like, uh, you're taking as a, a part of their like um you know for them to come for free they give you whatever beast you ask for sometimes you'll get like fucking five or six of them and you'll have a single memory where you make like 20 divines um and so it is it's not like loot explosion -y, but it is kind of uh it's kind of fun to catch those uh uh you know those those ups and downs in the distribution of the uh, harvest beasts um 
it, and obviously uh, it does rely on the uh, uh, honesty of the people that you're in the group with. But I find that, um, you know, when you offer people something that uh, is an advantage to them, uh, you're transparent about what the benefits are, um, as well as what you're benefiting from it. Like, don't hide that from them. Um, people tend to be completely honest. Uh, if there's ever situations where you suspect, like, say you do 10 memories with somebody and they, they say that they haven't captured a single beast and you know that you've captured because you've got your rejects up, you know, you've encountered, let's say, 10 vultures and eight, 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 uh, eight matrons in that time. And it's like, okay, you've got a 20% capture rate. We've killed, we've killed 18 beasts. Uh, and so you failed the one in five, 18 times in a row. Uh, you know, if it's a situation where you think it's uh, the person might be skimming you, you could just say, hey, man, just going to swap you out or whatever. No hard feelings. Um, but for the most part, again, people are, are generally quite honest with this. Um, if you are on the more skeptical side or paranoid side um, and relying on the kindness or the honesty of others is not uh, float your boat, um, you can also charge people to join you, right? So you could do like, uh, say, I'm running five memories each. Um, and then say two divines per person, right? I'm gonna charge two divs and you can come for five memories, right? As I mentioned, using the current values, the average price or the average profit per memory for additional party members was uh, 1.47 divs. So in that scenario, it would be about uh, seven and a half divines that they would get for on average per five memories, right? And they, you might charge them two divs. So they're still gonna make five and a half divs. And um, instead of having to worry about the beast, you know, you just have five people who each pay you two divs each. That means you get 10 divines extra, uh, which basically pays for two and a half of those memories. So it's up to you how you want to do it. Um, again, uh, how you handle your own business is your uh, is your business. Uh, not to, uh, not to uh, you know, hit the nail or the nose on the head there. <laughs> hit it on the, too, too close on the nose. Um, wow, I am uh, losing my capacity for speech. Uh, anyways, I think that uh, I pretty much said everything I need to say. Um, the ceiling for what you can make here uh, is obviously very very high um the beasts are always going to be in demand throughout the whole league uh the maps are very easy to do very low gear requirement um it is very 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 easy to replicate this isn't like a you know we're going to map until we get a mirror of calandra and a one in a thousand scenario you will be able to consistently do these with a very consistent and very very easily to determine you know what i mean like you can go in there and say it's going to be a two divine profit if i run 10 of these you can bet your ass it's going to be pretty much right around 20 divines profit if it says that on the chart there's going to be some variance just based on the distribution of the beasts in a single memory but again once you get into like even five ten plus memories um you're going to find that you know it's it's pretty much right on the nose so it's it's just a very very simple thing that you can do over and over the, you, you know the party the, the people that you have in your party don't need to be a very well geared or a bot with perfect connection speed and somebody playing like an, an armor sacker it can just be five people whose builds are completely trash um and you know as long as you get the people doing those things i mentioned following the right leader having the stuff called out so you're concerning yourself with the uh the break uh, that you're finishing them uh there's going to be no issues and uh with respect to this um i will make sure that we share this make it public now so that you guys can get there uh i did actually spend a lot of time working on this boys uh, i for, for me it's um I, i'm a, a personal goals are important for me I, I really like to try and get um you know i guess i started taking the youtube channel kind of seriously posting a video uh in january of last year uh, my first month i got like nine thousand subs which is a huge like uh, driving force and motivator for me um you know i think i'm close to seventeen thousand subs right now uh, I'd, I'd like to try and push for 20,000 subs for that one year mark, which is around the end of January. So about an, about a month from now. I know that's overly ambitious, but, uh, you know, I like to set lofty goals and pursue them vigorously. It's kind of who I am as a person. So if this is helpful to you or if you want to see more of this stuff in the future, um, you know, subscribing would be great. Um, but, uh, you know, if done float your boat, by, by all means. I know a lot of people probably have drifted far off into space by this point. Uh, in any case, I will link the... Uh, the spreadsheet for you guys below. Uh, I don't think that you'll have editing powers, um, but if you make a copy, you should be able to edit that. If that's not the case, uh, general access viewer, commenter, editor. No, I want you to be able to edit the original. Copy link. I believe if you make it, if you, uh, let's see here. Make a copy, make a copy. And then can I edit this? Well, actually, of course I can edit it. Yeah, so let, let, let me know. I'm pretty sure if you make a copy of this, you should be able to adjust the values and the calculations and 
uh, all of that should still be worked in. If that's not the case, let me know and I'll adjust it so that you guys can do that. Um, again, computer's not my strong suit, uh, so there is a chance that uh, I may have screwed that up. Uh, anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, that is how I was making uh, between two to five mirrors a day. Uh, that is how I was able to fund the vast majority of the uh, currency for the um, number one elemental mirror bow, the number one elemental mirror quiver, and our lovely, lovely, lovely number one ring. Uh, on top of that, I've got a plus one aura, 92% RMR, uh, three implicit hubris there. Uh, we've got a couple other projects on the go as well. I pointed out uh, we got this... Uh, this really cool uh, triple uh, implicit uh, or abyssal jewel. Uh, we've got a 7% dex, 16 crit multi plus one frenzy, 7% in 14 multi plus one frenzy ring. Bunch of cool shit on the way. Um, stay tuned for those of you who like to follow along with these things. You can check out my community section or uh, pop by on stream sometime. Um, oh, one, one more thing. Sorry. On stream, my name is now twitch.tv slash Belton PoE. The same as it is on YouTube. Uh, I, I requested a name change like six months ago, and uh, last night they finally approved it. Uh, so now my, um, you know, my uh, handle is uh, universal across all things. So you know the uh, the Twitch, the Patreon, the Reddit, uh, the Discord, the, um, all of it is slash Belton Poe. Um, I know for some people that they're used to using uh, Twitch dot slash James Belton. Um, old links probably won't work anymore. Uh, it's I didn't disappear. I didn't get banned. Uh, the handle was just changed. Um, but yeah, that's definitely the last thing. I know I have a, a terrible time wrapping these things up, but uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, if you have any comments, questions, or any videos you'd like to see next, please leave a comment below or just let me know what you thought of this. And uh, if, uh, if you guys want some more, I'd be happy to make it for you. All right, guys, hope you had a great weekend. I hope everyone enjoyed their holidays and uh, tomorrow's New Year's. So happy New Year to you guys if I don't talk to you before then. God bless and I'll see you next time. Peace.